so March was a month. Um, I didn't have the greatest reading month, but I'm going to go through my March books, like all the books that I read in March. And, um, yeah, it was a month. So in March, I set myself a TBR of seven books. I did not finish any of them. I started a couple, but that was because I was doing the starting a book every day for a month challenge. Um, that video will be coming shortly. I just kind of need to put together all that footage. So we're going to go in order. To start with, it took me 11 days to finish a book in March. And um, yeah. So the book, first book that I finished was The Housemaid by Frieda McFadden. This was my first Frieda McFadden book. I read this in a day, not in one day, but in like the time space of 24 hours so i really enjoyed this i'll be i've seen someone describe these books as like popcorn thrillers um could just be because this is my f the first of her books that i've read but i really enjoyed it i read it so easy so quickly um and i wanted to know what happened now on goodreads i've put it as a four stars yeah so on goodreads i put it as a four stars with the little comment of 4.5. I feel like it probably isn't a 4.5 because there definitely was, like, the main character did annoy me a little bit, but it was just so easy to read. And I guess I can kind of see, like, it's kind of like a domestic thriller, but with a literal housemaid. Uh, if you've not read a book by Frieda McFadden before, or are wanting to get into thrillers, I would highly recommend just because they are so so easy to get into i love how i'm like matching with the book i will not be matching with the rest of my books um but yeah that was the first book that i read this month well march then the next book that i finished was beach read by emily henry this was my first emily henry book yes i know we're starting a theme of first books by authors um I did enjoy this. I don't think I connected to the book as some people did. Like some pe for some people, Beach Read was their favourite, um, and I can see why. I it wasn't my favourite. I haven't read. I've started another Emily Henry book. Um, still haven't finished it yet. Again, started it because of that whole video. Yeah, I liked Gus. I feel like I kind of want to Gus's viewpoint. I always feel like that with a romance though, but I definitely enjoy her writing style. There definitely was cute moments. And as I said in my Goodreads review, it could just be because I was reading this book whilst I was tired. Um, cause I read this on my Kindle. So I was reading it in the dark, um, when I couldn't sleep. Um, but I rated this to four stars, which is obviously still a really good rating. And again, I think part of it was just, I was tired when reading this and obviously if you're tired that can drop the rating but I would definitely recommend it I can't compare it to her to her other books but I do own four Emily Henry books including this one um so we will see but I definitely think it touched upon some good points like there was definitely depth to the characters and for that point I did enjoy it I think also part of what I couldn't get behind was the character the main like the female character's first name i don't know i just think i, ju I just think january it's i think because it's not a name for me it's not a name that i kind of like the reason why she named was named january was cute in that sense like it was a nice heartfelt reason for her being called january but at the same time i wasn't a fan of the name and when you don't like a name of a character, it can drop it down. Gus, I was fine with. Like Gus was just like, that's cute. And I think if, I think if there's a nickname, did he have a nickname for her? I don't think he did. I don't think he did. I think that was another thing. I just couldn't get behind the name. Sorry to disappoint. Like, I think if she was called, like, yeah, I just, then the next book I am, um, technically didn't read because I DNF'd it. 
Um, so this book was Faking It with the Billionaire by Willow Fox. Now I came across this book on YouTube under the author's name by the way um, as like a free audio book and I just couldn't get into it and I don't think it was the narrator either. Like this book is very much insta love but it was like too insta love. Like there's insta love and then there's like come on this is your client. You shouldn't be thinking about having to resist putting your hands through his hair the moment he opens his door to you. Like, I'm sorry, but no, that's just taking it too far. And I literally did write that in my review on Goodreads. So you know what, let's swiftly move on from that. The next book that I read was Heartless by Elsie Silver. I f this is the second book in the Chestnut Spring series. I freaking loved this book. I loved the banter between Willa and Cade. It was so nice. I do partly wish that we could have seen a little bit more into like Willa's kind of personal life. I know that um, Elsie Silver's newest book, Wild Love, that's just come out is about Ford, who is Willa's brother. And I do definitely want to pick that book up. But yeah, I freaking love this. Again, I loved the banter. I loved the interactions with Luke, who is Cade's child from a previous, well, his previous marriage. And it was just so cute how she interacted with him. I loved the whole like grumpiness. Like this is definitely a grumpy sunshine and I freaking loved grumpy Cade especially when you got the flickers of him not being grumpy. I freaking loved that. I rated this a 4.5. The thing that dropped it was just the spicy scenes for a little bit. Like, come on, you're adults. <sighs> like, one of them, it was quite literally in such an inappropriate situation, at least in terms of like the way that they exited out of it. It was kind of like, come on, really? But, I want to continue on with the series that in fact I have and yeah I definitely do like her writing style they are so easy to read I did I read this in one day so I didn't read this book in one day but oh yeah I think it's because I had played I probably it's probably because I had placement a lot so I was like reading like 30 pages or something each night but I definitely enjoyed it and I could have been I could have binged it, um, but I was just a busy gal, you know? But yeah, I would definitely recommend. Um, if you're one that wants to know kind of trips going into it, in terms of some of the stuff that happens, obviously look into it. I didn't really care for the tropes in terms of like looking them up, but yeah, highly recommend. Definitely pick up, read them can't say more. Also by the way faking it with a billionaire I rated it one stars because it just. But the next book was also a DNF. This was I barely got into it but this was Logging Off by Nick Spaulding. I didn't give this a rating because I fully knew that the reason I was DNFing was more this book was definitely not for me. Um, whereas the faking it with the billionaire it was like a hockey romance like a nice hockey romance and it was just which is because it was like I wanted to get into it and then I heard that and going back to the faking it with the billionaire I did continue to listen to it after that kind of doorstep scene and I that was definitely a cute moment but it was like I couldn't again it was just there's insta love and then there's insta love I guess it's just not my favorite thing maybe it's just me um, but yeah, logging off, I didn't give it a rating because I knew that, I think, like, it's to do with, like, technology and it's kind of written, I think it's, like, it's first hand viewpoint, but in some ways it also feels like third at the same time, I don't know. Um, but it's just a lot to do with, like, technology and the overuse of technology, but it's written in, like, a fictitious way. And also I think there's really long chapters as well, like, really long. Um, which again would put anybody off. And then the final book that I finished in March was The Mage and the Magpie by Austin J. Bailey. Now I started this book back in 
think it was like September. I started it on Apple Books. Then, but I didn't really like using on my iPad or my phone. So basically got like 25% of the way through. Didn't really read much. Debated on buying it on Kindle. Eventually bought it. Um, and I read it on there. And although to start with it instantly captivated me and I wanted to read more, it just kind of lost me a little bit towards the end and I just I was interested in what was going to happen plot wise but I was also a little bit bored and I didn't really care so I ended up giving this a rating of 3.5 three star but a three on Goodreads this was good I would definitely recommend this was a fantasy this is it's part of a trilogy I do want to continue on with the series though because I could see with the way it ended our main character Brinley is going to have to find loads of people and that could get really interesting um yeah so I do want to reckon I do want uh, I do want to continue on with the series and I do think I'd recommend reading it stuff I think it's definitely YA I want to say it's YA but it, it doesn't feel like it's like there's no romance there's no heavy themes as such we all know what the kind of thing that Brinley is going to find out will be like we know that from the start we can easily guess it but it's definitely interesting obviously there's some plot building like world building I mean did I say plot building um there's definitely some world building but it doesn't feel like heavy like it's not loads of description we do visit loads of locations which can detract from the story a little bit but yeah three and a half stars again I will continue I won't buy the physical books I will read it on Kindle just just because I don't think it's a book that I want to own physically but we all know how that is um but yeah those are the six books that technically I finished two of those were DNFs um but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know how many books you read in March and I will see you guys in my next video bye guys